So be welcome to the next talk. We start a little earlier than announced in the schedule. Megacorp is the name of a huge conglomerate you may know from science fiction, but Megacorp is real. It exists, actually. Its mission is to acquire all fraudulent and scam companies that populate the internet and even already have tried to scam you. So Megacorp is an umbrella corporation that includes all scam, company, scam companies and it's a piece of art. So please welcome the two artists, Linda Kronmann and Andreas Zingerle, who will talk you, tell you everything you need to know about Megacorp. Hello, um, my name is Andreas Zingerle, and together with my partner, Linda Kronmann, uh, we will present you our recent artistic research project. The title of our talk is Trust Us and Our Business Will Expand, Visualizing Fake Websites from the Artist Against 419 Database. Um, sorry. I don't know this is here. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I want to briefly introduce ourselves. Uh, we work under the art collective name Kairos. Over the last five years, we have been focusing on internet fraud, internet scams, uh, as a main topic of our uh, artistic research. And we were researching into um, different vigilante uh, communities that um, try to stop internet fraud and to jam the working practices uh, of internet uh, scammers. And one of these uh, subgroups is called the Artist Against 419, as you see a screenshot here of their uh, database website. Um, and when you visit the uh, AA419 database, you can open the different links that you see, uh, and these links are uh, entries that are reported fake companies. Um, they are reported to the hosting providers and they are in the process of being checked by the hosting providers and then taken uh, offline. Um, so it can happen that these websites uh, disappear ra rather quickly from this list and are after a couple of hours not working anymore. And we couldn't find an overview or a visualization on uh, what kind of companies are these fake websites and what do they represent? And this leads us to start working on an artwork that tries to visualize uh, this repository. Um, so looking at the tactics of these vigilante communities, um, we can find old tactics and newer tactics that they use. Uh, older tactics were uh, like bandwidth hogging or DDoS attacks. Um, they were using self-programmed software called uh, Muguito or Lead Vampire. And basically it was a freeware program, uh, web-based applications that was uh, very easy to use. You just started up the program and left it running in the background. Uh, the program was repeatedly downloading images and HTML files from the scam website until the bandwidth limit was exceeded. Um, once the website was shut down by the hosting company, they would either refuse to host the website again or would insist uh, to charge a higher fee to the fraudster um, because he's using uh, more of the, the bandwidth. So some present tactics um, include that the members are collecting evidence and information about these fake websites. Um, that and they try to prove, or at least to raise the suspicion that this uh, company website is a fake business. Um, they write complaint letters to the hosting providers and in general try to maintain good relation 
uh, to the hosting providers and to the law enforcement that they uh, collaborate with. So when we look at some of the open source intelligence tools that they are using, um, then we see that uh, they uh, cross-check who is and DNS entries. Um, they contact the official website owners and see what, uh, who is repeating uh, there and who is answering their questions. Um, they crawl the web for copies of the website. They check registers. Uh, in the specific countries uh, that the company claims to be registered, if there is any official files about it. Um, they even visit the physical addresses to see if uh, the company is located there. And there are many other tools available, um, but we wanted to also focus on the tools and on the strategies that this online community uh, is using. So yeah, uh, do a uh, who is lookup, uh, you see who owns the domain, and um, the result will tell you the registrar, the company uh, where the domain was purchased through, um, when it was created, when it uh, expires, and as well additional contact details. And one of the key observations is to look uh, for how long this website uh, or the domain has uh, been registered. Um, often um, members say that if a domain uh, is active for less than a year, uh, but on their page they claim to be a well-established uh, business, um, then it, it's maybe already suspicious and it's one there should be further steps taken to look um, uh, at the website. Then, of course, the contact information, like what are the ways to get in touch with the website owner? Um, are the emails that are used, are they uh, part of the top level domain or are they using free email services? Is it a valid address? Uh, can you find it on different uh, map services? Um, are there phone numbers provided? Can you call there during business hours uh, and so on? So sometimes you can also uh, check uh, the HTML code and see uh, if, there, if the website was copied uh, or scraped before from a different domain. Uh, for example, uh, this is a screenshot of uh, an Austrian uh, company, it's called uh, Start Office. It's registered in Vienna. Um, but when you look at the uh, HTML code, you see that the website was copied from a domain uh, which is SunX Solutions um, on the 19th of October. And this company, SunX Solutions, you find again in the database uh, from the artist against 419. So uh, it looked like that uh, they just made a copy of a uh, fraudulent website and created a new logo and published it under a different uh, domain name. Um, a lot of the fake sites can be found by searching for text phrases or uh, sentences. Um, therefore, you can find other fake websites or the original page where uh, text has been copied from. Uh, for this, actually, they use different uh, plagiarism check uh, checkers like this uh, Copyscape, um, but there are uh, different other programs that you can use. That was just one example. Um, once they gathered this different information that should raise a suspicion or prove that it's a, a fake company, uh, they start filing a report where they also have uh, generators uh, to do that or to assist in these uh, steps going through it. Uh, basically, they contact the hosting providers and the registrar and they look for other possibilities to warn potential victims or other um, uh, organizations like in Austria, there is the watch list internet where you can report fake businesses or some of the scam baiting uh, community members also set up websites uh, and platforms like, like the scam warners uh, where you can discuss business proposals or um, search for these fake websites. Um, 
And of course, you should also report it to the artist against 419 so that they can include it in their database and that uh, already being listed in this database can uh, be um, dealt with as an argument to further explore um, a fake business. So, as Andreas earlier told, we were curious to find out what kind of businesses were represented on the fake websites. We wanted to comment on the template-based aesthetics of today's company representations, and we wanted to put an emphasis on the structures of centralization of money and power. The inspiration we took from science fiction, as was told in our um, <clears throat> introduction, uh, especially from uh, William Gibson, who actually coined the term Megacorp, um, as a big evil corporation that wants to take over the world. And these megacorps uh, are operated in, operate in several industries and are most often described as monopolistic conglomerates. So in science fiction, uh, there are many examples of megacorps. Some of the logos we have also seen people wearing here at the conference. For example, the Tyrell Co uh, Corporation from Blade Runner or the Weyland Yutani Corp from Alien. But of course, there are many more. And then there are the real world examples. Maybe the East Indian Trade Company that is often to have been the first multinational corporation in the world is a good example. Uh, it had uh, stock monopoly on uh, space trade, issued their own stocks, and, and also had an army that protected their trading ships. Uh, another real world uh, uh, example could be the Saudi Aramco. This is the world's most valuable mega, uh, valuable megacorp with the world's largest crude oil reserves. And I quote from their uh, 2014 facts and figures report. From building roads, railroads, schools, and hospitals to establishing wildlife sanctuaries and growing no knowledge economy, we have always been engaged in improving the quality of life for the people of Saudi Arabia. And of course, we know a lot of other uh, megacorps also in the tech world. So this is our megacorp. Uh, and these fictional and real world examples uh, were our sources for creating uh, our megacorp, which is a visualization of 1,000 fake companies. Uh, to start with, we had one challenge. Uh, when websites were listed in the database of the hosting providers, often ho hosting providers blocked the websites. So we could not go back to the websites to analyze them. The database only saves the name of the website and the WHOIS information. And this was not enough for us to actually have time to look at the websites. So we decided to scrape 1,000 websites, and this took us about four months to get our sample probe. Uh, we were not doing this on a daily basis, so this graph here doesn't really show how many fake websites were reported during this time. Um, but anyhow, it gives a picture of, of how and when we uh, scraped them. And the next task was to go through all these websites and see what information we could find and how we could categorize the websites. And within this process, we categorized the company starting with 31 different categories and then merging them to 10 to have kind of something that makes sense in the end. So these are our business segments of, of Megacorp. And uh, here you see that transport and logistics 
uh, are the biggest one, followed by banks that are usually used for phishing attacks and are most often clones of real websites. Uh, maybe a surprise is the fourth biggest business segment, which is online pet shops and animal transport. Uh, <clears throat> we also looked uh, into the claimed headquarter locations of the companies. Uh, UK with 220 companies and the London area with 118 companies really stands out. Uh, also, there are 22% of the websites that are not given, uh, don't give any location for their activities. This and more information we collected into a website and a printed interim report. <laughs> uh, we also uh, have a couple of copies with us, so please come and uh, get yours uh, after the presentations. Uh, we have there uh, also like uh, uh, the, the data kind of put into segments, into the different business segments where do the headquarters of different business segments, uh, uh, where are they positioned, and so on. And of course, because it's an interim report and we kind of had uh, uh, annual reports as our, uh, as our inspiration, the report also states a mission and a vision, and of course we have a letter from the CEOs as well. So besides the interim report, uh, the installation setup is created to look like a professional presentation of a corporate with roll-ups, data visualization, visualizations, a PC where you can browse through the scraped websites. Uh, we have several videos playing in the gallery, one showing the key figures of Megacorp in a corporate showreel with fancy animations and uplifting music. Another video shows our attempt to visit the companies and show what buildings and businesses are located uh, at the real addresses. In this case, uh, uh, of, in the case of banks, like this one in Accra, uh, the building really exists while the website is a clone. Other times we ended up in weird places like this residential area in Glasgow. Uh, this building should be the headquarters of an international credit union. Obviously the address was just chosen randomly. <laughs> Megacorp also has three headquarters in Hamburg. Uh, that we plan to visit actually during this conference. One is uh, actually really close to here at uh, Damtorstrasse 14, where a logistic company called multilogistics.com should be located. This is how it looks like. And there is no multilogistics there, so. A third video, uh, shows the main features of the website. Uh, here, for example, one of the eight websites that sells chemicals and powders to clean black money. Uh, the website uh, connects to an email scam called Black Money Scam. Uh, this is a scam you need to buy special chemicals uh, to wash off uh, defaced black currency. So to conclude, we wanted to create artwork that visualizes the effort that this scam baiting com community is doing and to create a time capsule of fake websites. So thank you and at megacorp.kairos.org you can uh, visit uh, the websites um, they are there as screenshots. In the gallery setup, we actually have the real websites, um, but there you also see the different segments and how many uh, companies are in each segment and where they are located. Yeah, and the reports are here.
So thank you very much, the re representatives of Megacorp, <laughs> for your entertaining talk. Please line up at the microphones if you have any questions. We have still 10 minutes left. So go ahead. Hi. I'm not sure it's Can please one of the audio angels? Yeah, I will do without mic. So, um, did the companies behind those fake site ever try to retaliate by threatening or attacking your website? So you are asking if uh, some of the uh, fraudulent company owners were trying to uh, attack our website? Yeah, or try to have you, your website get done or do anything against you, or is it just like, it's just copy busting and they don't, don't care of what's happening? No, we didn't have any uh, of these cases yet. Uh, I often, like within the Artists Against 419 uh, forums, I often read that um, the, the scammers or the criminals uh, are registering an account and then they claim that, hey, we are a real business, take my website off your uh, database because this is bad reputation for our customers and so on. So. Thank you. Next, are there any questions from the internet? So I would say, if there are no questions left, I think there is there someone? No. So I would say, thank you very much, and a warm round of applause for Linda Kohler and the singer for the talk. Thank you very much.